Today, I want to show you how to use LoRa with Flux model workflows. I'll explain what they are and how they can be used to control illustrations and styles, like the one shown here with East. So what is LoRa? LoRa stands for Low Rank Adaptation. It's a technique used in AI image generation models to adapt them without needing to retrain their whole model from scratch and at a fraction of the size. In this case, I'll be using LoRa based on the Flux dev models. There are many types of LoRa that can be trained and used to generate specific characters, building types, objects, styles, or functions, such as faster generations. The most common is the style LoRa, which I'll be using in today's workflow. I will also show you how to combine this with depth and canny maps for image to image workflows. Over in Comfy UI, I have a standard Flux workflow with text to image. It is the same Flux dev model and VAE loaded in as my previous video. So take a look there if you want more info on this basic setup. And over in the left, I have the Flux clip safe tensors files, clip L and FP16. From here, I will show you how to bring in LoRa and also combine them with each other and other image to image workflows for advanced outputs. An amazing node to do this is called the Power LoRa Loader by RG3. This is all you need to load the LoRa. This custom node is particularly recommended as you can load multiple LoRa, easily activate and deactivate them, and change the strengths. You need to install this node from the manager if you don't have it from a previous workflow. So, in the custom nodes manager, Search for RG3 and install. I will exit the manager and make some room to connect Dolora to the models. Dolora is an add-on to the original model, so it always connects up here. Make sure the base model type always matches, which will be flux dev in our case. Then it is the same for matching up the clip loaders. The model from Dolora connects to the K sampler. The clips go to the positive and negative prompts as this LoRa will be affecting what we type. I'll space this out a bit, and in the dropdown, from the LoRa loader, you can pick any modifier you like. Of course, first you need to find and download what you want. There are a huge range of LoRa available, often made by the community, and some by the creators of the main model. Hugging Face and Civit AI are two great places to search for LoRa. I'll begin by using a more realistic style lore and change the styles eventually to more artistic ones. The ultra-realistic lore, as the name suggests, brings in additional elements of realism. On the details, you can see the base model is Flux 1 Dev, which is good, and there are a list of trigger words which to use in your prompts. These are important, as the lore was trained on these words, so if you want the specific effects, you need to enter them. Here I will try the low lighting trigger word. If you scroll down, you can sometimes find suggested settings. So here it is suggested to use 2.5 guidance and a scheduler of beta. So over in ComfyUI, I will adjust these two settings. Now I will paste in the trigger word and then type in the rest of the description like usual. A modern concrete house in Tokyo in this case. Importantly, don't forget to download the model. This simply needs to be pasted into your CompUI directory under models folder and under LoRa. If you're using different base models, it is recommended to keep them in different folders so you don't get confused. Once pasted in, you need to refresh CompUI for it to appear in the dropdown. Select it now and you can adjust the strength of the effects here. This is especially useful if you have more than one lower model, but since we only have one, we can keep it as default. Now we are ready to generate. So the results are very lifelike with the Tokyo style power cables and houses with ground floor garages. This law is not so much about making a beautiful image, but about making realistic, which I say it does so. Even the low level lighting is great for these warm downlights. This is great for text to image workflows, but what if we want to use an image reference or more specifically have control over this? 
In previous videos, I showed you how to use depth and canny preprocessors to combine with reference images. Well, you can do the same here, but instead of using a new large base model, you can use LoRa too. Black Forest Labs has developed LoRa for both depth and canny, which are much more smaller in size compared to the base models and work hand in hand with Lux Dev. So you can download both of these and paste them into the same LoRa folder. Let's now load an image to extract a depth map. Let's say we like the shape and composition, but want to change everything else. To create the depth map, we use the AUX preprocessor. If you don't have this, you can install from the manager in the same way as was shown at the start of the video. I will select the depth anything preprocessor and change the resolution to 1024. Connect these up and add a preview image so you can see what the depth map looks like. Now to hook this up to the K sampler, we need one more node called pix to pix conditioning. We can delete this empty latent image. All our models, lower and preprocessors go through this. Connect the pixels from the depth preprocessor and add in the VAE. Then connect the flux guidance positive prompt and negative prompt to this. And on the output, connect all the matching points together. In the LoRa loader, we can press Add LoRa and find the depth LoRa we downloaded. I'll reduce the strength of this LoRa so that the ultra-realistic LoRa has more priority and also allows some more creativity in the image generation. Then make a small change to the prompt and keep it simple. I'll also change the flux guidance to be higher since we are using more than one LoRa model. When I hit Generate, we can see the preview of the depth map first. So it looks good and we can continue the process. With this generation, we see a great photorealistic image of amazing evening lighting. It also has added these lens flare effects because of the LoRa we used. If we compare this with the depth map, we can also see it has followed the angle of the building. Now I will demonstrate how LoRa can be used for artistic effects, such as sketches. Here is a simple tech line drawing LoRa on Hugging Face. You can find similar ones by searching, but I've picked this one as there are some good effects too. It is a very small file size and can be downloaded and added to your LoRa folder. If you scroll down, you will see the trigger words used for this. Tech line drawing. I'll copy this suggested prompt, paste it into my text, and edit to make it a pencil drawing of a modern wooden family house. And don't forget to switch the realistic lower to the tech line drawing lower. Great, this generation is exactly what we needed. It's following the depth map and has a sketch style and even has wooden cladding drawn in. Let's go a step further and change this to watercolor. There is this very nice watercolor lower I found. The model size is also very small, which is great. So you can download this and add it to your lower folder. And in the description, we can see the trigger word is Aqua Call Talk. We can switch out the lower to the watercolor one, and I will change the prompt using the recommended trigger words and phrases. And generate. We now have a watercolor version of the house following the same form and even the outline of the landscape. These last two LoRa are great perhaps for creating conceptual architecture images rather than hyperrealism. So for my last one, I will show you one of my favorite LoRa. It is a Ghibli anime style LoRa. You can get some nice effects by combining this with other LoRa and by reducing the strength of it, it becomes less cartoonish. This is actually very popular on Instagram and it is an amazing example of what a good trained law is. The trigger here is Jib Sky Style. Download this model and add it to your lower folder. Switch the lower loader to this one. And I will keep the lower strength to 0.85 to reduce the style strength so that it can retain some more realism. And in the prompt, I'll use the trigger wave. 
you can now see the artistic sunset clouds and surrounding nature. But because we reduced the strength, this kept some realism. It's not completely cartoonish. Finally, before I end, I'll show you that these workflows can be combined in the same way with the Canny Lower. You simply need to switch out the preprocessor, the Canny Edge preprocessor, and switch the lower from depth to Canny. And that is it. Let's find a more suitable reference image with better line work, such as this curvy concept house. I'll use the Ultra Real and Canny Lower together for this one and create a concrete house in low lighting. The outcome has some great materials and lighting effects again, although for some reason it has produced a white background, so we might need to add a prompt, put more information about the background to fix this. Now let's say I want the watercolor style of this. I can switch the lower to the watercolor, add in the trigger words and key phrases as before, so that it is in a watercolor style, and just adjust the flux guidance. And just like that, we have a watercolor version now of this. Hopefully now you have an understanding of how versatile this workflow is, and the power of combining various lore. The next step would be now to train your own lore to your own designs and tastes. I'll be looking at this in a future video, so I'll see you there.